students left class early today and what they're doing is they're demanding that they get answers from the school district after 56 of their own teachers received non renewal notices just last week. These RISD students are continuing here outside of the Washington Place building in support of Palestine. Now inside of the building is where it gets interesting. Now officials do tell us this investigation is nowhere near over. They're still trying to find out who key players are in this theft ring, including the lead organizer. We're live in Providence. Caitlin Gelhouse, ABC 6 News. But in the meantime, you can ski, you can snowboard. Come on by. They're open until 4 o'clock. And here we go. I want to show you. I'm going to hit the slopes. It's been a while. A little rusty, but. And now begins that search for a new head coach. This will mark the first time the Patriots will have to look for a new coach in the 21st century. John, confidence, I would say, is the word tonight. Even after a tough loss on Friday, these fans have no doubt that the team is going to hang up Banner 18 tonight. Now, I want to give you a look at what we're seeing and hearing here. They're chanting, let's go. Celtics. We've got a sea of green. It's very evident the energy and anticipation ahead of game five. No longer will bikers be down here on the path. They're going to have to come up to the sidewalk. Yeah, John and Tiffany, that word unspeakable is really what those neighbors are saying. These people were just trying to donate furniture and it turned into something a lot worse. A very sad situation for a family here on Joseph Drive. Earlier today, it was quite chaotic here. The Coast Guard was out here behind me. Helicopters flying over, boats out there looking for a reported missing swimmer. If you were here, you'd be able to smell the smoke that's lingering in the area of Pine Street as well as the damage. It is so visible and I want to give you a look here at what we're seeing, the debris on the ground. And one of those other tips, of course, is take a break from the sand and dip those toes in the water. I'm feeling confident that we're going to win this. We're going all the way and we're coming home with Baylor 18. How do you think Joe's feeling right now? I think he's feeling the same way. He's ready. He's ready for this. All right, well, Kristen's confident. She's also confident in Joe's ability to bring home 18 for the Celtics. We'll continue with the live coverage here in Johnston. Caitlin Gelhouse, ABC 6 News. Back to you, John. All right, that's right. We're here on Westminster Street in Providence where we have an active investigation behind us for reported homicide here this morning. I want to give you a live look at what we're seeing. Crime scene tape is still set up as well as officers still here as they conduct this investigation. Now, the Providence police chief tells me police received a well-being check tip this morning to come to this area. Police arriving to this home on Westminster Street discovering a male victim with very obvious physical trauma injuries. Now at this point, police tell us this homicide investigation will continue to figure out how this happened and who is held responsible. This is the 10th reported homicide in the city of Providence this year. Any chief in this nation knows that any homicide, one homicide is too many. Uh, we do what we can to make sure that we prevent and mitigate some of the violence that occurs in the city. Uh, I got the utmost respect and confidence on the men and women of the Providence Police Department. But incidents like this sometimes are, are unfortunate and are unpreventable. Now the chief says detectives are working on any possible leads for a suspect at this time. Again, this is the 10th reported homicide in the city this year. We'll continue to keep you updated on air and online as we continue to gather information. We're live in Providence. Caitlin Gelhouse, ABC 6 News. Yeah, John and Tiffany, no verdict has been reached here for the Karen Reed trial. In fact, these Karen Reed supporters, they were anxiously waiting outside of the courthouse today, but they tell me they're still hopeful, but they're just waiting on the jury's decision. It does seem like they're kind of dragging this out. Hundreds of Karen Reed supporters anxiously waiting outside of the Norfolk County Superior Courthouse. The, uh, the investigation wasn't done right. Thursday was day three of jury deliberations and still no verdict has been reached. Since the trial side we have every day, we're here for every pretrial hearing. You don't see that very often. Reed is accused of hitting her Boston police officer boyfriend John O'Keefe with her SUV outside of a Canton home in 2022 and leaving him to die in the cold. The defense arguing Reed is the victim of a cover-up involving Massachusetts State Police. You know, you got to support her. You know, it's, it's just horrible what's going on. You can't just always trust the police. You can't blindly trust the police. A sea of pink lining High Street in Dedham with one common goal, a not guilty verdict on all charges. We need to make sure she realizes that people care about her, that she's not going to be forgotten. 
Reed has been charged with second-degree murder, manslaughter while operating a vehicle under the influence, and leaving the scene of an accident resulting in death. I just hope that whatever the verdict is, that it's true justice. Now, Reed said she had absolutely no involvement in O'Keefe's death. These Karen Reed supporters tell me they'll be out here first thing tomorrow, hoping to hear that verdict. We're live in Dedham. Caitlin Gelhouse, ABC6 News. Yeah, John. Well, Joe Mazzula played ball for Bishop Hendrickson, and I had the amazing opportunity to catch up with his high school coach, who tells me that he made a huge impact both on and off the court. I would say character, determination, grit, toughness, intelligence. The words Jamal Gomes uses to describe Joe Mazzulla, and he would know. Gomes is the head basketball coach at Bishop Hendrickson High School. Going back to when he was in the ninth grade here at Bishop Hendrickson and now seeing what he's doing at the highest level in professional sports, I think those words still ring true for Joe Mazzulla. Missoula making an impact at Hendrickson, earning all state first team honors and winning three state titles for the program. But his impact was not just on the court. When he was a young man here at Bishop Hendrickson, uh, he was a great player, he was a great student, he was a great athlete. Uh, he had his ups and downs like any other high school student trying to figure out their way uh, through life. Um, but he, he had an it factor. To this day, Gomes tells me he and Missoula communicate regularly. In fact, the day Missoula was named head coach of the Boston Celtics, one of his first calls was to Gomes, and he asked him to stop by his first practice as the C's head coach. That was a very proud moment. I put it up there with getting married to my wife, having my two daughters, and then watching Joe Missoula on his first day as a head coach with the Boston Celtics. I remember driving home that day from Boston, almost in tears of how proud I was of him. Now, Jamal also sharing with me that he is not surprised one bit to see where Missoula is in his career right now. We're live in Johnston, Caitlin Gelhouse, ABC6 News. As recovery efforts are still in full effect following Hurricane Helene, the American Red Cross is looking for more volunteers. Police working all through the night to hunt down the two men they believe are responsible for that shooting as community leaders call this one one of the worst acts the city has seen in years. Rhode Island officials recording the first human case of Tripoli in the state since 2019. Tragedy tonight in Providence as police say a seven year old girl was shot in the city's Onyville section. Expect delays if your morning commute brings you along I-95 North this morning. Two lanes of traffic are blocked off near exit 38 right now. The state offices exit due to a crash. It happened about 40 minutes ago. Shots were fired at the St. Mary's Feast in Cranston last night. Mayor Ken Hopkins says the shots were fired at the West Restaurant and Lounge during the St. Mary's Feast on Saturday night.